Welcome to the Dice Tower video preview of Gen Con 2013. In this series of four videos, Tom Vassell and Z Garcia take a look at announced games for the Gen Con convention. And now, here are your hosts, Tom and Z. All right, folks, welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hey. And we, if you are going to be at Gen Con, we'll see you there. Now, Gen Con is the biggest gaming convention. Have you been? You've been there before, right? I haven't, actually. Oh, you haven't? I oh, this have will be new. <laughs> It is the biggest in the U.S., yes. It's the biggest board gaming, so it's the biggest gaming convention. That's not electronic gaming. Um, well, Essen's bigger than this one. I mean, uh, in, in America, right. Essen's yes. bigger. Essen's probably three times the size. But Gen Con's still huge, and they're, they're predicting, I think, 41,000 people there. So that's a little bit more than we're used to. We just came from Dice Tower Con with 600. Just a little more. <laughs> Slightly bigger. But the big thing about Gen Con is that they're releasing a ton of games there. And so what we've done is we've hunted down all the different games that we think are going to be there, and we're just going to talk about them. And this will give you a chance to see a little bit of the games that are coming at Gen Con, so that if you're going, you can see which ones you want to run to their booth first, <laughs> uh, knocking other people out of the way. Go. Or if you're not going, you can kind of you know kind of get a mindset to see which ones you should follow up on. Yep. So. We're going to go in alphabetical order by companies, but we're going to go out of alphabetical order for the very first company, that's Fantasy Flight. And there's two reasons. One, Fantasy Flight is the biggest board game booth at the fair. Mm -hmm. They're bigger than... Mayfair is pretty close, but Fantasy is pretty big, and they always release, like, seven new products there. The problem is, they won't tell me what they are. <laughs> <laughs> well... It... <laughs> so, so we really don't know. And, and some of them... You know, there's 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 going to be at least one game there. We're going to go. Wow, we didn't even know they were making right. that. Right, they do they do like to pull surprises like that. Yes, absolutely. However, we can guess on what will be there. So this is what I think will be there. Although you cannot hold me to this because I think the newest they'll have some of the newest Cosmic Encounter expansion. Yes, the, I, I think that will I'm be pretty there. Pretty sure that's like an eighty percent sure thing. Yes, I think they'll have at least some of the new spaceships for the next X-wing expansion. Ah, the you know they've been showing them off for a while, so I'm thinking they'll be there. I think they'll have the next Netrunner expansion. I think they'll have the newest mm -hmm. Descent expansion. Yeah, I'm saying a lot of expansions, but that's really all that's, I know but about. They, but they do put out a lot of expansions. So I think that's what I'm guessing. Other than that. Your guess is as good as mine, but you should go by their booth. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's go about the games we know will be there. First is 1A Games. 1A Games is a company that uh, broke off from, not broke off, I'm sorry, they bought the rights to Tide of Iron okay. from Fantasy Flight. Now, you've, have you, I don't think you've played Tide of Iron. I haven't, I haven't. You've seen it. I've seen it. Oh, <laughs> oh it's, it's a stunning looking game. It's, it, Tide of Iron is weird because it looks like a light war game, right. but it's actually not that light. It's like, I mean, okay, I know there's a war game out there who just threw something at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's... It floats away! <laughs> it, it's definitely heavier than, say, Memoir 44. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, they bought the rights, and so they're selling it. I don't think it's a new version. I think they just have the remaining stock. But they have a new expansion that they're putting out. That's right. That's going to be there. So that's 1A Games. Next, Academy Games. Now, Academy Games is known mostly for war-style games. Mm -hmm. um, they have two that are coming out. One is 1775 Rebellion. This is a very similar game to 1812. That's right. The Did invasion, you play 1812? The Invasion of Canada. Yes, I have. What did you think of that one? That's a great game. I was really impressed by, by that game. I went into it thinking it might be uh, more of a war game, but that's a great Euro game. So you, so you think it's Euro, not war? Uh, it's got war elements, but it feels like a like a Euro game to me. I like that. I liked it quite a bit. If it if it had more of a war game feel, I would have been a little bit more put off. But I thought it was a rocking game, and I'm really looking forward to this new one using the same mechanics. Yeah, I mean, as much as I like the War of 1812, I think the War of 1776. As an American, I'm very interested in that one. Um, and but it looks a little different too. I think that's. I think it only goes up to four players rather than five. Uh. But anyway. They're also making a game I'm really excited about because I love the theme of it, and that's Freedom the Underground Railroad. Uh, this is a game about all the players are abolitionists, and you're trying to establish an underground railroad during the Civil War time and help slaves get up there. And I think you might also be working towards the overall proclamation of freedom for slaves. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely one of my highlights for the show. I um, you know, I put I gave myself a list of what's coming out, and I, I gave myself I want to say about uh, I'll tell you right now three. Six, seven, eight, nine. I have ten highlights that I'm really looking forward to. Top ten for Z. So this isn't your top yeah, ten. Yeah, this is basically top ten looking forward to. This is one of them, Freedom. Yeah, it looks really great. Co-op game. Um, and it, it, it looks 
really stunning too. Right, and I think these guys, Academy Games has done a really good job at bridging that gap between really cool theme, mm -hmm. but not overly complex. Because a lot of times you put, you hear about, yes. you know, Underground Railroad 1855 yes. dash, yes. da 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 <laughs> And by the time you're done reading the title, you realize that the game, that's, that's just the title. You could have set up the game by then. Yes. All right, so that's Academy Games. Moving on to AEG, who has become a company to be reckoned with. Oh, yes. I mean, they really have put out a lot of good stuff. Um, a couple of their um, new releases, and by the way, we should mention that some of the releases are not necessarily the first time ever at Gen Con. Maybe they came out a month ago, or maybe they just came out this week. Yes, yes. You know, it's it's... Anyway, for most people, the first time we'll see it will be at Gen Con. And some of the things we mentioned also might only be there in demo form as well, if I'm not mistaken. I'll try to point yeah. those out when they're in demo form. And it's always possible that they thought they would have a game. That's right. And then it shipping held it up, and so then they have like one or two copies. Mm -hmm. But AEG has a whole slew of new stuff coming out. They have Agent Hunter, which is a two-player uh, game hunting down agents. You know, one person hunting That's down right. the other it's one. A Mike Elliott design. Um... And Mike looks, Elliott, that's right. That's right. And he looks, did Thunderstone. Uh, it's a very, it seems like a very light two-player game with spies trying to figure out information. It actually reminded me of Pecking Order. I didn't has, like Pecking Order, though. It has a very similar idea where you flip over a, a character and you tell the other person whether it's higher or lower. You know, so it has that, some, of, some of those same ideas, some of those same, uh, that same vibe. Um, it looks interesting. It looks really light. It looks like one of those uh, minimal component games. Well, that's AEG is kind of starting a line of that. Yes, yes. Um, the Love Letter was so popular that they're doing it, and I think they're also doing Card of the Dead. Um, they're coming out with a, mm -hmm. another version of Love Letter for people who want the original Japanese art. Japanese artwork. Does yes. that matter? I don't know why that really is a big deal. <laughs> I, I, I love Love Letter, but the artwork is great on it already. Um, Card of the Dead, talking about that, it's a small Japanese game. It looks neat. I love the artwork on that. It makes me think of um, Smash Up, the artwork on it. All right. I like yeah. the artwork and, for Smash uh, Up. I, it seems a little take that for me. I'm not so sure how that's going to play out, but it looks cool. I, of course, I know you're a little burnt out on the whole zombie thing. but uh, There's uh, a zombie game in my top ten. We'll get to that later yeah, all on. All right, all right, cool. That looks neat. Um, what else we got from them? Maximum Throwdown. Now, I've actually played this game. Oh, okay. It's very similar to Flowerfall, mm -hmm, where you drop. Course. Flowerfall, though, you drop, and this one you throw the cards. And if it doesn't, you actually have to land on top of other cards, and then they activate. And it's been a bit, I'm, I'm a little bit hazy because I was a little punch drunk when I played the game. It's just uh -huh. like, it was, I had con fatigue. And so I do remember that you could, at some point, you could take someone else's card and drop it somewhere else. Okay. And I ended up taking it and seeing how far across the convention I could throw it to make that person <laughs> walk and get it. <laughs> Which I don't think was a spirit of... I was playing oh, the, the croquet wow. rolls, you know, like, oh, oh see your card later! Go find it. <laughs> but uh, it, it, I think there's more skill to this one than there would be to Flyerfall, because when you drop the cards in Flyerfall, they just fall. <laughs> there's no skill. Right. They just... But when you throw, I mean, some people can throw cards better than others. Right. Well, I could see someone who likes the idea of Flower Fall, but not so much the theme, getting into this because of the cool fantasy theme. You know? Yeah, that's true. That's that's part of it. And he, you mentioned Smash Up. They have the obligatory Cthulhu expansion, uh -huh. which adds four new factions, the cultists, the old ones, the... Um, Is there a Miskatonic one? Yeah, Miskatonic. And then the last one was the name of the city. Um... Not not Arkham, but I don't know. One of the cities. Anyway, it's all about madness. There's a deck of madness cards. Mm -hmm. Thunderstone has two things coming out. They have the starter set, which is interesting because it's so bland. <laughs> no. Right. I haven't played this. You've played this already. Yeah, I played it with Melody. I yes. wanted to teach her Thunderstone. In Thunderstone, you set out eight decks, right? Mm -hmm. This game comes with ten. That's so, it. so you know, there's two decks you don't use. Right, right. Oh, and maybe there was 11, but still, okay. you know, not many. It there's no experience, but I mean, if you wanted to, like, just say, here, learn to play Thunderstone on your own. This is the set I would use. Mm -hmm. You could still use it as an expansion, everything, and it's new. Okay. Um, but you know, that's interesting. Then they have Numenera, uh, an expansion which is based on some other Monty Cook's RPG. I don't know much about it, but maybe it's like a crossover, so those RPG people come play Thunderstone. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, the people who like Thunderstone know that this is for them. You know what I mean? I, I think this is not going to be creating any new fans, at least not the expansion. No, no, no. no. I, think, I think Numenera will bring in RPG people to you really, play it. Yeah, you think so? Well, we can hope. Cool. Uh, Trains is probably going to be their most sought-after release because yes. it's so close to Dominion, but it has a board. 
Mm -hmm. um, and they, it was a Japanese game. Did you play the? I did. I did play it. Yeah. yeah and 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 one of our biggest complaints when we played it was that it was just so bland. I mean, it, it didn't look. The graphic design wasn't very good. Yes, that's right. Um, but AG looks like they really knocked it out of the park. So. Well, I know one of the main things we said when we played was this game. This game is really neat. This game is great. And it'll be so much better once someone picks it up and, and cleans it up and makes it pretty. Yeah. And and that's what we're getting. That's exactly it, you know? So I'm, I'm looking forward to this one, too. It didn't quite make my top 10, but it might have been 11 or 12, looking forward to games. So moving on to Albino Dragon. They are a brand new company. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, a Kickstarter company. Uh, they Their big thing, they made a lot of money on theme decks of cards. That's right. Uh, which is, I still don't get the draw of those, but whatever. <laughs> One of the games they did is Ace of Spies, which is from Michael Fox, uh, who does the Little Metal Dog podcast. And so that game has been in production, it seems like, a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, another one was Dragon Whisperer, which is a... Trick-taking trick -taking game. game. Now, you played that one with yes, me, right? Yes, we played that. We played we, that. The we Richard Borg game. We were somewhat less impressed with it. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't bad. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a somewhat chaotic trick-taking game. And I'm always a little wary when you add... I mean, because trick-taking has that luck in it already. Yes. Adding a little bit of chaos to it. You know, they had those chips. And, mm -hmm. uh, and oh, look, get, I got some points. You don't know what you're going to get, right? Well, just that the Trump changed a lot in the game. I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, but but anyway, that's not going to be there. It's demo only. But so you'll have a chance to try it out. Cool. And then they also have uh, Ethereum as a prototype. I don't know much more about that other than the name. Yeah, there wasn't too much info on that anyway. All right. Moving on to Ape Games. I really like Ape Games because they do um, the Rolling Freight, which is a game I really like. Mm -hmm. And you'll always know where their booth is because they have all these rubber ducks lined up. <laughs> right. Hey, you've seen the Duck Duck Go, That's right? right? Yeah, they have all the themed little <laughs> rubber duckies. Yes. And you would not believe the amount of people who walk by and buy ducks for no other reason than they're there. <laughs> I want a zombie duck. I want a cowboy duck. I want cheerleader ducks. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, I mean, if people buy ducks, put them out. But they also have some pretty serious games, and they have... Uh, Island Siege coming out, which looks pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was on your list. Is that in your top ten? No, it's not. It's a it seemed like a takeover sort of dice game. It seemed neat. I really liked the look of it. Um, at first, when I saw some, I did some research, looked at some images. I was thinking it might be a miniatures game, which I'm not really into. Um, but it does not look to be that. It looks to be a dice game. You roll, take over other people's um, ships, that sort of thing. And it, it seems neat. I'd love to try it out. Do you know sometimes movie theaters, movie studios, you'll see, um, though it seems like movie studios will come up with the same thing, like there was Deep Impact and Armageddon came At out the same, same year. time, yes. Right. I think the same thing's happening now with giant monsters. Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we had King I, of Tokyo. I, I have to say, though, that is, I think that is a fallout of King of Tokyo. Okay. Because that game was so popular, and it's such an amazing game. I think that's what we're getting now is, is a sort of a pendulum swing, you know, reaction to that. Well, one of the games that I'm mentioning is just because Ape Games will be demoing a game that's called <laughs> RAR. <laughs> that's the name of the game. Now, you won't be able to buy it there. R-A-R-R-R? -R -R? Yeah. Pretty sure. But that's a giant monster smash-up one. Um, there's not a lot of information about it right now, but just the idea that it's about monsters. That's a theme that... Will show up again, definitely. Well, but it's a theme that will get me into a game. Sure, They're Like, sure. it's about giant monsters. All right, Let's I'll play it. Let's give it a shot, yes. Then Arcane Wonders, last year they released... Mage Wars, which was one of the big hits at the convention, people running there. Now they'll, they'll still have Mage Wars. They just they're showing off their newest expansion, Druid vs. Necromancer. It may be for sale there. It may not be. Okay. You know, it depends if they got it printed in time. But they also have their latest expansion that just came out. Their alternate Beastmaster and Priest. Mm -hmm. There'll be plenty of cards there, promo cards and such. Cool. Ares games. Now Ares is known because they took War of the Ring and reprinted it. Hooray! I don't think you like War of the Ring, though. It's probably I haven't too... played it, actually. I All think right. I would like it. I think I would like it. I, I thought Age of Conan, which was, was a similar game, was interesting enough, and I only hear better things about War of oh, the Ring. Yes. Well, Ares is best known probably for Wings of Glory. <clears throat> this, mm -hmm. this is a game that predated the X-Wing from Fantasy Flight, in which you have airplanes flying around and you use cards to show how far they go. Right. They have plenty of new airplanes going to be there. Do you care? The FW-190? The D-9? D-13? D-13 is going to be there. <laughs> The, the, the P-51D Mustang. <laughs> anyway, so they're going to have um, some of those there. They're going to be, they're reprinting Incognito, which I think is a cool thing. Now, is this Incognito the, um, 
The old big one or the little one that fences no, the flight? Oh, please, not that little one. That was horrible. The no, big the, one. The big one with the one you shake it and the, the little, freak, little balls come down. Freaky face. Yes. Freaky head. Yes, okay. And incognito, you're you're a partner with someone at the table, but you're not exactly sure who you're a partner with, and you're moving people around. You're trying to figure out who your partner is, and then once you figure that out, uh, trying to accomplish a mission together. That's right. Um, then they're going to be showing off, unfortunately not selling yet, two games. One's Galaxy Defenders, which I don't remember if you playtested that with me. No, I no. didn't. No, I, I did playtested it. It's a much more, it's probably the most involved, um, mini it's like a miniatures cooperative game. That's, That's right. the best way to describe yeah. it. It's and the miniatures are stunning looking. They oh, yeah. look really cool. Well, everything Ares does is pretty much stunning. Yeah. And then Sails of Glory. Now, this one looks pretty cool. It's like Wings of War, but it's with ships. Wings of Glory, which used well, to be Wings called of Glory. Wings of War. It used yeah. to be called Wings of War. Yeah, it looks really neat, too. Um, I actually saw some people playing this, if I'm not mistaken, at uh, Dice Tower Con. And um, they had a whole table taken over. It looks really neat and involved. And, and if you like Wings of Glory, I think Sails of Glory. That yeah, it was really a Kickstarter, so I'm not sure when exactly it's coming out, but it's soon, mm -hmm. and I think they'll have some of the ships there for people to see. Cool. Asmani Games, which has made a couple games like Flowerfall and Innovation. Those are what they're most well known mm -hmm, for. Mm -hmm. I, they don't have any new games, but they will be demoing a couple games. One is Consequential. It looks like this is on your top ten. Yes, it is. It's uh, Carl uh, Chudik, is it? Yeah. Co-design. And um, I really like his, uh, his Glory to Rome, so that's what I'm excited about. And it's a co-op, and you can play solo. So I'm really looking forward to it. I really want to check this out. Um... Like, again, like Tom said, again, it's just a demo there, but I, I, I'm excited about this one. I mean, I'm a lover of co-ops anyway, and this designer has proven that he, he's, he can make some really interesting stuff, so I'm excited. I'm actually more interested in their other demo. I mean, Consequential looks interesting, but Impulse, which is a 4X, Explore, Exterminate. And two other Xs. Extinguish? I don't know. Expel? <laughs> I don't remember what they, I can never remember what they are. Basically a civilization building game as a card game, a space game. Um, it looks a little bit like innovation, which would make me like it. And me not like it. <laughs> so we'll have to wait and see on those. Now on to Asmadi. Now Asmadi is bringing in... Um, they, they, they're basically kind of a... They work with a lot of publishers overseas. Mm -hmm. So there's many publishers, for example, they work with the folks who made Ghost Stories, Repost Productions, and they work with several other companies. So they, they're bringing them in, and they're bringing in a, a stable of game designers. I'm so excited about this. I know, me too. Me Antoine too. Bauza, who is in my top designers ever. Yes. Bruno Cathala, also in my top designers. My top. <laughs> oh, is you gonna, are you going to shake when you go see him? Oh, uh, starstruck. Uh, <laughs> no, I think I'll be okay. Chris, You're right. Those guys, they, uh, for me, for, for my money... Best group of designers out there, pretty much. Christopher Bollinger, the designer of Dungeon Twister. Yes. They're bringing... Um, uh, no, he's coming in with Z-Man. But there's other people coming in, like an Ignatius. Um, oh, Ignacy T. The guy who did Naroshima Hex. Yes, love him. But, so this is... I mean, for me, that's one of the coolest things about this. There's going to be a lot of cool game designers there. Not to mention Richard Launius will be there. Rob Davio. Um, a lot of game designers. That's one of the cool reasons. But anyway, back to Asmodee. Cardline Animals. This is kind of like Timeline. Did you play Timeline where you yes, try to put like the cards? Yes, I like Timeline, yes. You're trying to put the cards in order, and, and, and Cardline Animals, it's the same thing, but it's like by weight. It almost sounds like the Timeline version of, of fauna. fauna. Right. So that if we play it with the one guy, he'll be like... <laughs> That's so wrong. You, don't you go to the zoo? Rise of Augustus, which is... Augustus was one of the nominees for the... Uh, Spiel des Jahres did not win, but it's still nominated. It was a pretty big deal. Gamer Bingo, in essence. They changed the name for some, I don't know, some reason. But it's called Rise of Augustus. New characters for Werewolf, because we need multiple werewolves with multiple characters. Awesome. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm looking forward to it. That's always cool. Oh, yeah. Helvetia Cup. Is that how you pronounce it? Hel Helvetia Cup? I have no idea. Fantasy soccer for two people. Yeah, I saw that. The pictures looked kind of interesting, and the miniatures looked cool, but soccer doesn't really mean I'm too interested in it, and I don't know. I just didn't, it didn't catch my eye. Um, it looks cool, and if you like soccer and fantasy, it's sort of like, here's your blood bowl, you know what I mean? Now, what's interesting is this is a new company from Switzerland, mm -hmm. and I don't, off the top of my head, I can't think of any Swiss game company, can you? Not off the top of my head. Anyway, the company's named Helvetia. Um, and they're also coming with another game called Shafausa. I, I hope I'm pronouncing this. This is Digging Dwarfs, which 
It's, uh, 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 I've seen that theme before well, at least yeah, like five theme, times. Well, the theme was neat, and then I started doing some research, and it looks like a really heavy economic game, you know, which I was like, whoa, this is, I mean, it looked very involved. So um, I think this one might be a surprise for, like, the, the Euro gamers, heavy economic gamers out there. You know, if you get if you get a chance to check it out, check it out because it looks like something that might be up that, you know, up your alley there. Now, Masquerade is one they're coming out with, and this is in my top ten. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the new Bruno Fiducci game. Basically, it looks like mixing of Citadels and Coup. That's right. Uh, basically, you have a card that gives you a special ability, uh, but you also can switch cards. Maybe you put them on your table. You're like, all right, I've switched cards with you. I promise. You know, and then you you take the ability of the guy in front of you. Right. And maybe someone can call you on it or not. I don't well, know. It sounds call, cool. You can call the ability, right? You, you don't really have to have it. I'm pretty Honestly. pumped about that. It just sounds cool. I'm surprised you're a Citadels fan, right? I am. I am. You know, it, it looked like Coup. And I like Coup, but I, I don't know. It didn't seem different enough. Well, you know, this is one of those try it out first and see how that goes. I'm a little worried. Uh, For Duty is one of my favorite designers. But lately, his games have been really light, very social, with not a lot to back that up. And you'd think I'd like that, but I'm a little hesitant. So we'll see. I definitely want to check it out. Then there's uh, Spirium, which just came in the mail like Ooh. 10 minutes ago. Jealous! <laughs> no. Um, this is from William At Adia, who did uh, Kalis. And so I heard about it, and I was like, oh, okay, heavy Euro game. But it doesn't look heavy at all. I mean... Look, I mean, it just looks really light. Maybe it's not. I mean, the rule book is actually thicker than I expected for a I do really like, small game. It looks There's, neat. It looks like a neat card game. It's a small box, as you can see. This is the size of uh, my Karenis. Yes. Did he and do that one? No, that's not, that's not his design. It's just from Astari. But it's also. from the same company, Astari. Yes. I'm really, I'm, I'm a little more excited now, honestly. I'm not a Kalis fan, but this looks like it might be a neat game. I'm excited about it. Another one of my top ten games, Dungeon Twister, the card game. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very excited about that one. Although, at the same time, a little wary because anything the card game often is not, yeah, it could it throws, not be as good. It throws you know? up red flags for sure, yeah. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. I, I'm not a huge Dungeon Twister fan, but I know you are. And uh, I'll check that out. I'd like to check that out. Then they'll have the giant versions of Takinoko, which I'll believe when I see, because they were supposed to be at Dice Tower Con, yeah. and they weren't there either. But I saw at least some of the prototypes of them at, uh, at Origins, and it's just huge. I'm just curious how big this panda is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> no, they actually sell even a bigger one for like people who just buy it to put on their shelves. That's cool. Then I'll have some prototypes there. The new expansion for Seven Wonders, Babel. That I'm excited to check out. They have Rampage, which looks hilarious. Basically, another monster game where you're smashing meeples by blowing them down or flicking, flicking school things. buses at them. And they're going to have a giant version there where you'll be able to. You have to punch the building. <laughs> <laughs> and then Corio. Uh, it's a small card game, mm -hmm. a filler. This is on your top ten? This is on my top ten. Yeah, this looks really cool. It looks a little bit of like Citadels-ish. And it's from... Um, I think the company's name is Moonster Game. Yeah, yeah. Or the Moonster. ones that did um, Gosu. Right. The, the two-player, well, it's, it's more than two, but it's really a two-player card game, really neat. And this looks cool. I love the artwork they put out, first of all. The artwork is awesome. And it looks interesting. Again, it gives me that Citadel's vibe, which is sort of, you know, it's, it's ironic because the one game from the guy who did Citadel's, I'm not as excited about as I am about this one. Nah. So all right. it looks neat. Well, let's wait and see. Anyway, folks, that's a few of the companies uh, in this um, video. We'll be back at our next video to tell you about more games. All right. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.